test. Okay, welcome to Intel session. Uh, today, uh, um, our topic is let's accelerate the uh, design process of a hardware device. Okay, let's begin. Um, this is today's agenda. We will cover the following topic, uh, introduce the user scenario, um, and uh, firmware validation, compatibility validation, and uh, show the benefit. Um, here is the real user scenario from Shanghai Hardware Validation Team. This overview is the automated development validation cycle. Uh, let's quickly go through the workflow. At first, after develop modified firmware component and uh, check the code into the source code repository, this action will trigger the CI system to pull the code from the repo and assign a compiling job to the build agent VM. Each component will be merged into one firmware image, and then the CI system will flash the image to the specified uh, SUT. After that, the system will run the test case on it and uh, collect the result. At last, the subscriber could receive the report mail. Um, and our mission is um, uh, we focus on the red area and aim to help hardware team to uh, improve the process. What's the problem statement? In this case, um, the hardware validation team needed to test the main board, call it a system under test, uh, acronym is SUT. You can see the left uh, instrument, uh, le left illustration. Uh, this is the original uh, logical topology of one set of the SUT test platform. Uh, there were two um, instruments between the automation test host and uh, SUT. Um, uh, and uh, the left one is the control box. The test host uh, uh, will command the control box to, um, to uh, through the USB cables, and then the control box will operate the SUT to flash the firmware and run the test case. And uh, the other one is the IP-based uh, KVM. And the test host use it to record the main board video output for image uh, comparison and ensure that all the uh, test procedure could be traced back. Um, the middle picture is a real photo from the hardware team's lab. You can see it is messy on the bench and uh, take a lot of space. And um, hardware validation team have to purchase the, de the desktops to act to the role of the test host because their test framework decide one test host um, Corres uh, correspond to the one um, SUT. But not only that, uh, one bench could only place two sets of SUT uh, test platform. So lab space um, could not keep the pace with the SUT number growth. So um, engineers have to share the limited lab space um, as, uh, uh, for different uh, SUT. As, mm, and it's uh, it is difficult for them to set up SUT as, mad as many as possible in the same time. And here's our improved solution. Uh, ideally, without uh, change the CI framework, we use the VM to take place with the physical automation test host and uh, use the USB over network solution to connect all the physical devices to the VM. Uh, set up a uh, NUC as a USB agent server to convert the USB uplink and then redirect the USB connection to the specified VM. And meanwhile, we use the uh, multi-port KVM to replace the single-port model. The result is there's no physical test house in lab. All these devices in the topology could be mounted in the standard server rack. So uh, make them uh, make their life easier. Okay, <laughs> uh, um, um, sounds good. Uh, first problem is how to redirect a USB connection. Now let's put the question to Zhen Zhen. Thank you, Meng. So uh, we have uh, moved all the test hosts into the our OpenStack 
cloud. And uh, we also consolidated all the USB cables into a uh, USB cable appliance. So how could the test cases in the cloud to still be able to use those USB devices? It's obvious that the USB appliances should direct, redirect those USB devices to, uh, over the network. So we have uh, two options here. Uh, this one is uh, the first option, is to illuminate the USB host controller interface, that is, uh, or HCI in virtualized test systems, I mean, the guest OS. Uh, actually, this is the approach of uh, for most, almost all the commercial solutions. And uh, we also found an uh, open source project called the USB IP. Uh, of course, these solutions can work, but What's the question? What's the problem? So this is, first is a, a traditional virtualization way. It's uh, difficult to manage in our OpenStack cloud environment. And we, of course, we also want open solutions, uh, just like most of the people. And uh, we don't want uh, vendor locking. So unfortunately, the open source project at USBIP uh, seems to not actively maintain and uh, it's uh, not good enough to be used in the production uh, environment. So another option is to enumerate the USB HCI in Cumu as uh, uh, hypervisors. Unfortunately, we already have support from hypervisors, either Hyper-V over the RDP or Spice for Cumu. As we are using the KVM, so we did some investigation for Cumu. We have uh, two options uh, for, for the QMU solution. One is the TCP redirection, and uh, the other is the SPICE USB uh, redirection channel. Both of them uh, depends on the same open source library called uh, lib USB redirection. So to emulate the USB HCI in QMU, we need to thank Red Hat. They provide the USB SPICE protocol with a USB redirection channel in the SPICE, which is uh, stable and uh, easy to use. But you have to use it in the SPICE client because it's one channel of the USB protocol. So we are bounded to the SPICE protocol. So this is not good, it's not feasible to use in our environment because we consolidate all the USB devices into the USB appliance. So we cannot to run tens of uh, US, uh, spicy clients in just one USB cable appliance. And the, the person has to sit down uh, be, uh, before the screen of this USB appliance. Clients, uh, appliance. So, uh, and uh, in the USB spice candle also does not share the USB channel at the moment. So we cannot use this in our environment. So in another world, in another side, USB TCP redirection is not bound with any special display protocols. So it's just, it's just implemented in the uh, QMU hypervisor and uh, it's simple and pure. So we can be, it can be used with all kinds of uh, access methods. For example, uh, you, you redirect this uh, USB device over the TCP redirection socket and uh, you can access the virtual machine with either SSH or VNC or SPICE, you, you can always get the USB devices redirected to the guest. So, uh, but it also has some uh, downside too. Uh, currently, the USB redirect server is uh, too simple. We do not find any um, a good solution for the USB redirect server uh, in, 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 as open source. So we just got one uh, test code from the library USB redirect. So uh, another, another problem is that the code in the QMU side, it can only con try to connect to the USB redirection server at the boot time. So if, when you are boot the instance or the, the, the guest, if the USB redirection server is not ready, QMU will die. So this is uh, it's not good. 
So uh, with, with this limitation, we won't have uh, recollection and uh, hot plug support? Of course, we can improve this. For example, we can have an agent running in the same machine as the QMU runs, and the agent will fix the, we will use the agent to fix the reconnection problem and the hot plug problem. So um, with this agent, we can also, because uh, we don't put code, the agent code in the QMU uh, process, so for any, any version of the QMU uh, which supports the TCP redirection, we can use it. So we, we don't need to depend on uh, upstream or put, uh, merge our code into the QMU process. But it's still not good enough. Why? Because we are not using the traditional virtualization way. We are using OpenStack Cloud. So we still need a way to work with the cloud, cloud uh, environment. This is our answer. So we are planning a new project called a portal. It's going to be a service to manage uh, all network redirectable hardware resources. So the user can use those resources in an on-demand and uh, self-service way, just like uh, Cinder Volume or, for example, Ironic Nodes, right? We can uh, add, the, add the, the, this kind of uh, redirectable resources and then uh, attach this resource to a specified uh, instance. So here is a high-level design. Uh, well, I have to say it's a, it's, a, it's a very early stage. We just planned it. So at the left, we have uh, hardware redirect services to export the hardware resources. Of course, they, they have to be able to be redirected over the network. Uh, in our case, it's, uh, this, this uh, is the USB resources, and uh, they are running in, in the uh, consolidated USB cable appliances. The, uh, we have a port agent in the uh, right side, which is running together uh, inside the node computer, the, the computer node. Uh, so uh, with, with this agent, the instances run by a QMU, they can connect to the agent at first. So because it, the agent can always run it, right? So we don't need to, well, the QMU won't be there, and we always have the connection. And the agent will also help to fix the reconnection and uh, uh, hot plug kind of stuff. So we, at the top, at the top layer, we also have a portal CLI, which will uh, find uh, this hardware resources and register this hardware resources into the portal service. So the portal service is the key to manage all the resources. If you um, manage the resources and also when you try to, uh, we, we, you have a, a boot uh, instance and you want one USB, de USB device to connect to this, USB, uh, this instance, you can use this uh, CI to say, but attach this device to this instance. So with the help of the port agent, uh, the port agent will then establish the connection to the hardware redirect services. In some environments, we also have to use the uh, port proxy, just like the no VNC proxy, because of the network may be not uh, may they cannot be connected directly with the uh, computer node and the outside network uh, redirect service. So. As just I said, it's still in the very early stage, and we will appreciate all kinds of, uh, any kinds of uh, help from the community. Uh, that's all, any questions? Good, okay. So uh, now I will give control back to Mong. Thanks, uh, Zhen Zhan's answer. Uh, till now, uh, that's all for the firmware um, validation. How about the compatibility validation and telling it's your time for OS provisioning?
Okay, thank you. I will talk about the uh, OS validation, like the competitive validation. But uh, before that, I just want to make a short survey. Um, I just wonder how many people in this room know about Ironic before. So please hands up. Wow, that's more than I expected. <laughs> okay, then let's start. So recently we uh, helped uh, our inter internal customer to build a deploy system based on Ironic. Our customer is mainly working on hardware design and uh, provisioning. And uh, they will want to validation their device for the functionality. So they have a very strong and uh, high frequency request to do the OS provisioning. So then we, we introduce Ironic to them. So here is our abstract infrastructure of our solutions. So we use Ironic as a standalone project without any other project in OpenStack. And this, it is located in the, our IT data center. And uh, using internal network, Ironic is able to access the, uh, the hardware device like the SUT1, SUT2, and SUT3, which are located in hardware validation lab. And uh, Ironic is able to do the pro uh, control this device and do the provisioning. So, even some of you already know Ironic, but I would like to introduce Ironic again. So what is Ironic? Ironic is an integrated project of OpenStack. It provides a bare metal as a service. So you can either use Ironic with other projects, like Neutron or Nova, but you can also use it for standalone, like what we did. So Ironic is many make use of PXE technologies, but uh, it uh, also has some many advanced features. Like the first is the BIOS configurations and the BIOS upgrade and uh, also like disk erase. So here, here is, uh, Ironic is able to fast deploy the pro OS and uh, so here is a uh, simple use case for how to use Ironic. So we have one central node which is running Ironic service, like the Ironic API and Ironic conductor and the database. And uh, we have a bunch of bare metal nodes which without OS installed. So the admin, it only, he, he only need to send a simple request to the Ironic service and says, hey, I want to deploy a uh, Fedora 20 on the Node 1. And uh, then Ironic will help, will choose a Node 1 and uh, uh, set the node to PXC boot and uh, use uh, SCSI and the DD to deploy the Fedora on the node. And then, bam, in, in two or three minutes, you get, uh, you get a system installed on the node. So it also works for Windows. That's pretty simple and uh, fast. So first, uh, at the first stage when we talk about our customer, we want to use Ironic directly, but uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not gonna enough. And of course, it's not because of Ironic is not gonna enough. That's because our customer have some special request. But they are our customer, you know that. We have to satisfy them. So they have some requests like they want to deploy the system with UEFI and the legacy system. And uh, they also want to make use of WinPE. WinPE agent, uh, WinPE is a small Windows image, small, win small Windows systems. It is running on the memory. You can, it's a very useful tool. You can use that to manage your bare metal machines and uh, deploy Windows images. Our customers are very familiar with this workload. So they want us to help them to keep this one. So, so then we decided to use Ironic to put a WinPE agent directly to the dedicated node. And uh, the third request is a little special because <clears throat> our customer is working for the hardware device validations. 
They want to validate the compatibility of their device with the drivers. So they don't want us to install the uh, image, install the window, complete Windows image. So you know that during the Windows image proce install process, there are steps to restart the system and uh, load the driver. They want to keep this step to validate the functionality of their device. So we will provide a semi-finished product of the Windows image to the pass this image to the node instead of provide a complete image. So with that, we can mimic the driver instance, driver install process. So after many rounds of discussion and redefine, redefining the our solutions. Finally, we get a final usage scenario. So the deploy system will still have a regular PX menu. And uh, the device, I mean the SUT, will put into PXC, uh, put into WinPE agent as default. But uh, the admin is still is able to select the dedicated OS and select the dedicated node. To install the to install using Ironic. So some future work. So our system work well, but uh, currently we are only able to use command two to send request. It's not good enough. I mean, it's not vivid. So we want to create a dashboard. So in the future, our customers should uh, able to select get the status of their nodes from the web and they can select the dedicated OS and dedicated node from web as well. And uh, another work we want to do is for enable ironic advanced features like hardware management and something else. They are very helpful and uh, useful for our customers. But uh, this next step. Uh, and uh, personally, I think Ironic is a very useful and well-developed software. So I would encourage everyone who is interested in this to play around by yourself. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tallings, uh, intro uh, introduction. Um, all being said, it is important to share the benefit. About benefit, the first one, yes, uh, previously a user could leverage the IT OS provisioning to, to rebuild the desktop OS via the network and then to set up the test environment by themselves. After they migrate the test platform, um, on the cloud, they just need to renew the template and quickly replace the, a bunch of the test environment on demand. And also, it is easy to extend or shrink the scale. Uh, the second one, yes, after uh, decoupled the cable connection between the SUT test platform and the automated test host, we can easily to switch the USB connection uh, from the SUT to various uh, uh, test or debug uh, VM environment, user don't need to move the SUT to the other place in order to um, connect a different uh, um, work environment in different workflow stage. So it is flexible for development and validation transition. Uh, the third one is yes, after the whole workflow running uh, on the cloud, it means the test, uh, the test case, the report, the benchmark, and other valued data will be saved on the cloud. No data right to uh, the desktop in the customer lab and uh, rely on the access control on the cloud. It is a good way to prevent information disclosure and hardware disaster. Uh, you can see that uh, we could only put two sets of the SUT uh, uh, test platform on one bench before. Now we can land eight sets of the SUT platform, uh, test platform on the rack. Actually, we can make it higher density than eight. So one rack could help to replace two bench lab space at least. 
After convert to the square feet, the saving proportion is one to 10, with uh, increasing number of the SUT test requirement. This is good proposal to prevent lab, uh, lab space sprawl. Also, this rack uh, infrastructure support a various SUT uh, models such as the server board, the mobile device board, and etc. And, and uh, also, the rack tray could be customized for different SUT or peripheral uh, instrument. OK, that's all. Any question? Okay. Yeah. You were talking about Portus in this project that's starting up. Do you have any idea? Uh, okay, uh, Jinjang, could you please take the. Um. Uh, excuse me. Can you do, you, do you have, with the Portus project that you mentioned, do you have an idea as to how long it will take to bring it together and to get it usable? Can we bring the ironic and the. The part, I know, yeah, the part of, for the next sta statement you said. How long do you think it's going to take to get Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so for, for the product project, right? Yeah, it's uh, still in the first stage. And, uh, you know, for we we have uh, several components to be implemented. Let me take it. Yeah, this one is uh, we need to enhancement the USB redirection server. So, um, for the privacy at the first stage, we think is uh, is okay without this. Uh, but the port agent, we already did a very uh, initial Im implementation. Um, this one we are trying to uh, leverage other OpenStack projects code. So, we plan to be um, get the first. Uh, Initial, uh, I mean, the initial race in the M race, maybe. Yeah. So, but it looks like uh, interesting for you. Thank you. Uh, not yet. So, yeah, the plan is to we are get the first uh, initial release in the M race, M cycle, and uh, we are definitely we are put into the GitHub. We, we, we want to, you know, as a big patent uh, model, uh, OpenStack Foundation is encouraging everybody to put your uh, projects under the cover of uh, OpenStack, right? So we are trying to do that. And uh, we also, of course, we also leverage a bunch of uh, open source code. Is, so stay tuned. So what is the hardware redirection service? Uh, in, in our case, this is a USB redirection service. USB redirection server. So it's a uh, if you have if you have other devices, for example, maybe RDMA or other slow slow speed PCI devices, which if they if they can be over uh, redirected over the network, so we can use use this use the portal to manage them. Sorry. Yeah, we use this to redirect the USB devices into the instances running in the cloud. Right. How? how? Uh, in our case, we you know we have a USB redirection protocol, which is implemented by I think it's Red Hat guy. Right. Yeah. So we also talk about that like we can use the Spice, right? Spice also have a USB redirection channel, but uh, it's uh, bundled into the Spice protocol, and uh, you can only use it with the Spice client. So, what? Not the both. It's a lib USB redirection. That's a that's a library. Yeah. You mean the library or our code? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's, I think it's, uh, I don't remember it, but uh, it's on the GitHub. Uh, it's on the free desktop uh, GitHub, Git, Git uh, repository. I think it's Apache or MIT. I, I cannot remember it.
Any other questions? Okay, so stay tuned for the portal project, and uh, we we appreciate any kind of help from the committee. Thank you. <laughs>